I recently made this audio switch circuit out of a JFET to pass or block audio, but I found when I was supposed to be blocking audio with the JFET off, I was still getting a small attenuated copy of the input signal. It was bleeding through these bias pull-ups to this 4.5 volt rail here. And thanks to comments from a couple of viewers pointing it out, I forgot to put a bypass capacitor on this 4.5 volt rail. So with this JFET off, and basically it could be considered as being out of circuit, what I was left with was two voltage sources and a passive network of resistors ending up with an attenuated sine wave out for a certain sine wave in. If I had a bypass capacitor here, what would have happened is when the JFET is off and I should get zero out, the DC would be blocked by the series capacitor and the AC up here on this rail would have been shunted to ground through a capacitor. So there should be minimal AC and no DC out. When the FET is on, passing audio through here, the DC from this 4.5 volt rail is still blocked, but now AC has a very low impedance path to make it out, relatively unaltered as expected. So I wanted to draw this schematic and I decided to draw it in LT Spice so I can also simulate it. This oscilloscope circuit down in the bottom is just a circuit on standby to look at after all of this. LT Spice is a free download. Now that linear technology has been acquired by analog devices, LT Spice is available over at analog.com. And I will put my Spice simulation files over on GitHub and link that. These are just ASCII files that you load into LT Spice, so it's just basically a net list of wiring between nodes and node connections for components like a resistor 1 meg R1, V2 is a sine wave voltage source 1 kilohertz 0.5 volts peak. So you just take these and load them into LT Spice and then you can run a simulation. So I'm going to click to run the simulation, this icon of a guy running away, and here's the simulation window. I ran a sine wave 0.5 volts peak 1 kilohertz transient analysis for 10 milliseconds. Now I can choose where I want to probe. So I want to see the output. There it is. This JFET is turned on because the gate is pulled high to 9 volts. So my 500 millivolt sine wave in is passing through and 500 millivolts out. When I turn off this FET, I have to bring this gate control to ground. So I'll change this circuit delete the wire to 9 volts, add a wire to ground, rerun the simulation. So now the output should have been cut off, but I have a very small 2.5 millivolt peak sine wave. So to give that perspective, I'll probe the input as well. Change the color to something legible. So now 500 millivolts still coming in, and almost nothing out, but you can see the ripple. So I'll take away the input to rescale the output. I'll run it. So to cut it out, 2.5 ruler, 2.5 millivolt peak instead of zero because it's not bypassed. So this is the result of this network of passives with two power supplies. So in order to see where is this 2.5 millivolts coming from out of this, Without going on a big tangent for Thevenin equivalent circuits and superposition theorem, normally when you have multiple sources like this, if you want to figure out the final output, you evaluate the resulting circuit with only one source on at a time and all the others eliminated. So for current sources, we would leave it as an open circuit if this was a current source, but voltage sources, you just short to ground everything except the one you're evaluating. Now, I don't care about the DC circuit because in the end I'm filtering out any DC anyway, but if I want to see what happens when we have our AC sine wave source, I would short this nine volt DC source here to evaluate what the AC circuit sees. So if I short this, 
this 10K gets shorted to ground, so you have two 10Ks in parallel, which is a single 5K to ground as far as this AC source is concerned. And with this FET turned off, it's basically out of circuit. And as far as AC is concerned, these series DC blocking capacitors aren't there. And this one meg resistor here, it's just in series with this and there's no other load to ground. So it's basically an open circuit. We could consider this not present as well for this purpose of just wanting to probe the output. So what we have basically left over, a sine wave in series with a 1 meg resistor and then a 10k to ground, which is a voltage divider, and the output of the voltage divider is what we're probing. So I drew the equivalent circuit, sine wave in, series 1 meg, two 10Ks in parallel to ground, so a 5K resistor to ground, and the output of the voltage divider is our output. I simulate that, probe the output, and we get the same as the bigger circuit, an attenuated sine wave, 2.5 millivolt peak. I simulated this one for 20 milliseconds instead of 10, just to differentiate the waveforms. So this one's going 20 milliseconds and the waves are closer together, but it's the same thing. So back to the original circuit, just to compare the 2.5 millivolt peak, it's the same. And it's only 10 milliseconds simulation instead of 20, so I can visually see as well quickly. So this all simplifies down when the FET is off to this. So now if we want to put a bypass capacitor, it would basically go from here to ground across this 4.5 volt rail. What we want to do is minimize this 2.5 millivolts as low as we can get it to zero. So how do we figure out what kind of capacitor value to put here? Since this is a voltage divider already, and when we add a capacitor, that capacitor is going to have an impedance at a certain frequency in parallel with this 5k resistance and it's going to be a voltage divider still. So we'll choose a capacitor based on the frequency range we want to use so that when it's in parallel with this 5k the resulting output of this voltage divider is even more attenuated than this. I've seen circuits like this using 47 micro for that capacitor and I tried various scenarios all the way down to 100 nano Basically, the larger the value in this case, the better it should attenuate. So if I add a 47 micro bypass here, the 47 micro is in parallel with a 5K resistor, and we need to figure out the equivalent impedance here to figure out the voltage divider. So here's one way to figure out parallel capacitor and resistor impedance, 5K resistor, 47 micro capacitor, and we're gonna look at this at one kilohertz because it will change over frequency being a capacitor. And we don't care about the reactive aspect of this being minus 90 degrees phase. We just want the magnitude of impedance. So with this formula, the magnitude of the impedance is all of that, which equals 3.38 ohms. So this is a one meg resistor with a couple of ohms to ground, which as a voltage divider, that's gonna be a very small signal. So let's simulate. I'll probe the output. So after it settles down, it's a couple of microvolts output. So now our AC signal is being shunted to ground. So a couple of microvolts, so 3.386 or 3.39 ohms. I got 3.39 ohms as well. I just calculated the reactance of the capacitor. Xc is one over two pi frequency capacitance. Frequency is 1 kilohertz. Capacitance is 47 micro. So then that's where I get my reactance. And then on my 4.5 volt rail, those two resistors are 10K. So those in parallel give us 5K. So that's the 4.5 volt rail, two 10K resistors in parallel giving 5K. 5K then is in parallel with this 47 micro. So those two in parallel give us a 3.38 ohm impedance on our final bottom resistor out of our voltage divider. The top resistor is 1 meg and the bottom is 3.38 ohms. 3.38 ohms. So then I calculated the output of the voltage divider with and without this bypass capacitor. We saw in the simulation a peak of 2.5 millivolts and that's what I calculate without the capacitor. So that would be the sine wave peak in times the bottom resistor 5k 
divided by 5K plus 1 meg, 2.5 millivolts for these two resistors not bypassed. So that calculated out just like the simulation. Then when we add the filter capacitor, I did a voltage divider, input sine wave 0.5 peak times our bottom impedance of 3.38 ohms when we add the capacitor at one kilohertz divided by that impedance plus the top resistor one meg. So I calculate, what is this? Carry the one, 1.69 microvolts peak. So because this is a large capacitor, I'm gonna run the simulation longer so it can settle down. And over here, what do we have? I'll put a cursor on here, keep zooming in, so that I can scroll the cursor along to a peak. So it's about 1.52 microvolts. I got 1.69, close enough for practical purposes. So I'm not sure exactly how it gets simulated and these little differences, they may matter in some cases, but for what we're doing, this is a bypassed AC signal. That's good enough. I've got this set up with idealized parts. For example, this capacitor is a pure capacitance. There's no series or parallel inductance, resistance, parasitics. Same with my idealized input sine wave. So with that simulated, now if I put this 47 micro in the original circuit, it's the same circuit, but I added the bypass right here. I've reconnected the gate control to plus nine. So now the gate is turned on. The AC in should pass through to the out identical. So I'll run that and probe the output. There's our 500 millivolts peak and the input, change the color. The input is also 500 millivolts peak. They're directly overlapping, but they're both drawn. So now I'll turn the FET off and try to shut down the output signal. I'll change the wiring. Bring the gate to ground. Now the FET should be off and I'll rerun the simulation. And now the input sine wave still 500 millivolts peak. The output looks like it's grounded which is what we want. So I'll try to zoom in on this by deleting this input waveform. I ran this simulation for eight seconds. So with this entire circuit, our 1.5 microvolts now is more like two microvolts. So again, it is a highly attenuated sine wave. Adding a bypass capacitor takes care of this sine wave that was bleeding through because I forgot to put it there. Here's the 4.5 volt power rail circuit. Right now there's no bypass capacitor. I have a nine volt battery coming to the breadboard and then I'm using two 10K resistors to derive a 4.5 volt source. The input audio source is represented by a function generator sine wave, one kilohertz, 0.5 volts peak through a series DC block capacitor and it would normally go to a FET switch and also has a one meg resistor pulling it up to this 4.5 volt rail. What would be the output of the FET would also be pulled up with another one meg resistor to the 4.5 volt rail and then the output would go through another DC block capacitor to remove the 4.5 volt offset and just give us our sine wave out, or no sine wave out if it's supposed to be turned off. I'm not using the entire FET circuit here. I'll explain that later. I really just wanted to model bypassing or not bypassing the 4.5 volt source. So the audio input and the two scope probes are all grounded at the same point of contact, which is off of this one 10K resistor that connects to ground. There's also a 100 micro across the nine volt battery. So I tried to make the paths as direct as possible with no jumper wires. So the signal comes to the capacitor directly to the resistor. I was having a lot of trouble prototyping this and there was noise and coupling everywhere. So I just ended up with this circuit. So the input sine wave channel one yellow is about 500 millivolts peak and probing directly on the 4.5 volt rail with no bypass. The peak output is about 2.5 millivolts at one kilohertz. So if I increase the frequency, let's say, because it is meant to cover the audio range, let's go to 10 kilohertz. And again, we still have two and a half 
toward three millivolts peak on our output 4.5 volt rail. So this signal is what I was observing when I tried to build the audio FET switch and the FET was turned off, but I was seeing a small attenuated version of the sine wave coming through. So it was bleeding through this network of resistors and I did not have a bypass capacitor here to shunt AC to ground. So I'll go back to one kilohertz and now I have a 47 microfarad capacitor. If I put this from the 4.5 volt rail to ground, the 4.5 volt rail loses that sine wave. Now it's got all this spiky stuff, so I'm not gonna pay attention to that. But even with that, it's showing me a couple of hundred microvolts, but really it's basically a flat line. The AC has finally been shunted to ground with the bypass. So I'll bring the frequency up again, Still, the sine wave is bypassed to ground, a couple of hundred microvolts peak, but it's all just these artifacts. Again, I take out the bypass, and there's the bleed through sine wave not being shunted to ground. So I'll put it back in, and as for all this weird, glitchy looking stuff on the channel too, right now I connected the scope probe directly to its own ground lead, and I have the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna call that zero signal. As for how come now I don't just try to put the whole FET circuit back together and show that I'm not getting an output sine wave when the FET is turned off. Well, I'm having trouble breadboarding this type of circuit. Even now with the scope probe flapping in the breeze, we're getting somewhat of a representation of our sine wave picked up. I can lay this probe directly on top of the output capacitor and there's what I would call a bleed through if I had it hooked up. If I put it right over the input sine wave test lead, I already have a four millivolt peak. So when I hook up the probe directly to the output, no more picking it up from the air, I'm basically probing the equivalent of the FET circuit with the FET turned off. Sine waves coming in through a capacitor, getting pulled up to the bias, back out through another resistor, back out through a DC block. I would expect to see a flat line, but I'm seeing five millivolt peak sine wave. I bring the probe up to the 4.5 volt rail. There's the flat line. So I'm not sure if I would have better luck if I actually try to solder this onto a proto board, put it in a metal enclosure that's grounded and stuff like that. But anyway, the point here was bypassing the 4.5 volt rail, sine wave went flat, not bypassed, sine wave can pass through the network of resistors. So this is one way to get a representation of what significance throwing in these various bypass and decoupling capacitors can have on a circuit and also ways that we can simulate it to see if it's going to do what we hope and calculate it based on various tools available.